technology with you today. Let's get started. This whole sessions of all DQBs are meant, the questions in DQBs are framed in a way to ensure that you learn more concepts rather than just questions. Let us take this example. So a question, a 28 year old male, 28 year old male presents with history of pericardial chest pain. Okay. So it should be pericardial chest pain. Patient is having a chest pain. He has a BP of 80 by 60. Hmm? So it should be a precordial chest pain. Patient is having a history of precordial chest pain. Precordial chest pain. Left sided chest pain. He has a blood pressure of 80 by 60 millimeter of mercury. So, the patient has chest pain with a hypotension. When the patient has got a precordial or a left sided chest pain, you definitely suspect with the possibility of it being cardiac. It can be angina also. So, you suspect it to be cardiac in etiology, cardiac in etiology, left sided chest pain. It is associated with hypotension, associated with hypotension. One of the most common causes of this situation is the coronary artery disease, is the coronary artery disease. So if you have chest pain and hypotension, you will definitely consider the possibility of a coronary artery disease. However, it can be either confirmed. Usually, coronary artery disease occurs in elderly person and associated with STT changes on the ECG. STT changes on the ECG can be seen in a case of coronary artery disease. But since the patient, since the patient in question is a young male, since the question is a young male, we must consider the other possibility that the patient is having a cardiac arrhythmia. Patient is having a cardiac arrhythmia which is led to hypotension. You must consider possibility of arrhythmia. In the arrhythmia, how do we classify? So ECG shows wide QRS complex with no preceding T wave and a rate of 112 per minute. So, arrhythmias are broadly classified into two. Broadly classified into two. When they are less than 60 beats per minute, we classify them as bradyarrhythmia. We call them as bradyarrhythmia. And when the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute, we classify them as tachyarrhythmia. So this patient, this gentleman, 28 year old person is suffering from a tachyarrhythmia, suffering from a tachyarrhythmia. Let us see how to classify the tachyarrhythmia further. The tachyarrhythmias are further divided into two based on the site of origin, site of origin based on the QRS morphology, based on the QRS morphology, you will divide them further. So if you have a question of tachyarrhythmia, like in this case, based on the QRS morphology, you will divide them into the two groups, you will divide them into the two groups. So when you get these two groups, what are the possibility? It can be a narrow QRS complex which indicates supraventricular origin. Which indicates supraventricular origin. Or it can be a wide QRS which indicates a ventricular origin tachyarrhythmia indicates ventricular origin tachyarrhythmia it can indicate 
so this patient had a wide qrs complex has got a wide qrs complex indicating that it is a ventricular arrhythmia it is a ventricular arrhythmia within the ventricular arrhythmia we want to sub classify them further ventricular arrhythmia if it has a regular heart rate we are going to consider ventricular tachycardia if it is associated with a irregular heart rate we are going to consider this as either the polymorphic vt polymorphic vt torsad depoints as it is more famously known or it can be ventricular fibrillation ventricular fibrillation so here so even if it was a narrow qrs with no preceding p wave we always think of atrial fibrillation in ventricular arrhythmias it may be difficult to identify the p waves okay may be difficult to identify the p wave so this patient has got a ventricular tachyarrhythmia with hypotension so you cannot make out the exact cause of the arrhythmia based on the information given so exact arrhythmia cannot be identified based on the information cannot be identified cannot be diagnosed based on the information but is it really needed to diagnose is the point here so rather than reading all this what am i going to remember the golden words the word is that whichever arrhythmia if the patient is in shock you also shock when the patient is in shock the doctor also must shock that's the important dictum for all you medicos out there in an emergency room in your first posting trust me you will find patients who come with collapse you are unable to identify the ecg don't call your boss he'll murder you you know what you do remember the dictum the patient is in shock but there is some rhythm on the ecg so the treatment is also shock so based on this simple dictum you can say that in this patient the patient's treatment on this patient you will go for dc electrical cardioversion you will go for cardioversion will be the treatment in this patient so intravenous lignocaine is no longer much recommended it is a class 1 anti arrhythmic drug class 1 b anti arrhythmic drug which is relatively weak agent so it is indicated only in a stable vtac it could have been given in a stable ventricular tachycardia but here patient is not stable so this lignocaine could have been given in a stable ventricular tachycardia but this patient is not stable overdrive atrial pacing no this is a ventricular origin arrhythmia transluminal angioplasty no this is not a mi this is not a coronary and artery disease this is not a coronary artery disease hence it is not the correct answer here you have to go for dc electrical cardioversion right so this is the short approach learn the concepts and be the leader all the best